Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here once again is in my garage shop, and we are here to talk about the Excalibur Ultra adjustable dado, which, by the way, let's just get this out of the way. It's not a wobble dado blade. I, I've been misspeaking about that. Nothing on this thing wobbles. Uh, I learned quite a bit studying the manual since our last video, and I want to begin this video by making a couple quick announcements. The first one is, this is not the midweek Q&A follow-up to that video. That was really a pathetic <laughs> unboxing video, and, uh, and I don't know that it has any place on this channel. So <clears throat> this video, we're going to use this dado blade. We're going to talk about how it's used and what makes it unique. Um, and then we'll do a follow-up, including your questions from the last video, as well as this video. We'll do that Q&A tomorrow. Now, speaking of tomorrow, if you happen to be a member of the board of directors at the board of director level or at the chairman level, tomorrow evening at eight o'clock, and what is the date tomorrow? Tomorrow is the 27th, I think, May 27th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you're invited to join uh, a live discussion that will probably include a portion of that Q&A recording just for fun. Why the heck not? Um, the, uh, the link to that is in the channel community section. How do you get there? You can get to this channel by going to youtube.com forward slash my growth rings. Once you're there, you can click on the videos or the playlist or community tab. And that's where our members find, uh, well, all kinds of private stuff, including previous stumped Q and A episodes that have become private as well as uh, some private communications between us. And uh, the link to that Zoom meeting is already posted there for you. So we'll do that tomorrow night as well as record the Q&A. <clears throat> All right, so let's get into this thing. What did I learn from studying the manual? I learned a ton. So first off, this thing is designed, as, as I assumed, uh, to be used either as a left-handed drive or a right-hand drive. In, in this case, uh, it is being driven from the left, as I would on my ShopSmith Mark V. But if you happen to have a table saw or a radial arm saw where your motor or the, the bearings on your arbor happen to be on the right, you have to disassemble this thing one time and put all of these controls. This is where we, we dial it into the precise width. Those need to be on the other side so that you can have access to them while it's mounted on your saw. If you're using this on a table saw, the wrench that was in the kit is used to allow you to make those adjustments from above through the, uh, the slot in your table, the insert in your table. Um, also, if you're using it on a radial arm saw, there is a spacer that is included that goes onto the, uh, the arbor of your radial arm saw before you mount the blade. So uh, a bunch of the manual is dedicated to explaining how to convert this from a left-hand mount to a right-hand mount. And then surprisingly, there's a whole other section that talks about converting it from a right-hand mount to a left-hand mount. They, they, they didn't want to leave anything to chance, and they walk you through step by step by step on how to convert this. Um, now, what I said a minute ago was that this is not a wobble dado. Well, this is the thing that's fascinating to me. Let me take this off the arbor so I can show you exactly what's happening. So you'd think that since I mentioned this was a white whale of mine, something I've been trying to get a hold of for a long time, that I would understand it. And what's funny is I remember playing with this at a Sears store 25 years ago and thinking, dang, that is too rich for my blood, but I want to own one one of these days. These sold back in the early to mid 1990s for $200 adjusted for inflation. That's what did I looked it up? It's like $370 today, the value. Crazy talk. Anyway, the way these are used is you can use them either as a two-blade dado blade, which will allow you to cut from a quarter inch up to half inch wide, or by adding the third blade to the center, you can go up to 13 sixteenths or a sixteenth of an inch wider than three quarters of an inch stock. Um, as I mentioned, when you take this apart to use it in the other configuration to, to drive it from the other side, you move this drive pin over to the other saw, other blade, and you remove these screws right here and take this portion, this kind of a cam deal, 
that you see mounted to the back side here, that goes to the other side and those components come over here. So we've got, what do we got? A total of eight bolts, nine if you include the drive pin that would have to be taken out and everything swapped around. Now here's what makes this thing really unique. You have two outside blades, just like in a stack dado blade set. Those two outside blades are always on the outside. There's no wobbling to them at all. They each have, I didn't count this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 22 teeth. And 20 of those teeth are scoring the outside of your dado or your rabbit. Now, why, if they have 22 teeth, are only 20 of them scoring the outside? But remember, as I pulled this thing out, I looked at it and I said, huh, that's interesting. It's, it's got a tooth here that's got a bend in it. It's kind of offset. And that goes in, and there's one, one at, uh, let's say, 12 o'clock and at 6 o'clock. The opposite blade has the exact same thing, and then they both have these big old bites that are taken out of them. So when you align this to make a cut, you're going to align the offset tooth with the opening in the opposite blade. The drive pin, all this is happening on your arbor, by the way, not here in midair. Um, you've got your drive pin goes into a hole between them, and they go together. All right, so now we have that set, and that is set for its smallest width of cut. Now, what's going on here is it's as if you had your, your fingers offset like this, and when you bring them together, they line up. Uh, just as they would with you know, two thicknesses of your hand, but you've got a few teeth that are reaching over to the other side. So imagine as you expand that, those teeth act as the chipper for your sizes uh, between the quarter inch up to half inch. It's got the chippers built in. So you can adjust this for width without having to take a blade off and add chippers. Those are those inter intermediate blades that, that clean up the waste between those outside blades on a stacked dado set. So again, if you take a look at that, you can see there we have the, the blades lined up with each other, and then we have the offset one that's reaching in and it's cutting between these two. Crazy, crazy. So without having a wobbling center blade, we're able to accommodate all those various widths. Now, if we go over the half inch point, uh, from a half inch up to the 13 16 we put the third blade into play. So let's uh, let's take this outer blade off. Again, I am going to do something I don't want to do here. <laughs> take the outer blade off. Let's just go ahead and mount this on the arbor while we have it. Okay, so here it is on the arbor. We can take our third blade, and it is also equipped with offset teeth. Now it has, uh, it has offsets going both directions, going both left and right. Really an interesting idea. Now we want to make sure that the, uh, the teeth are all facing, you know, traveling in the same direction. And we want to make sure that the drive pin engages it at the right spot, which is going to align the bent teeth so that they enter that gap in the outer blade right there. We we'll take that one, we we'll take our next one, put it on again so that uh, our drive pin aligns everything properly. And again, the wisdom of that drive pin is you, you would have major problems if these blades started spinning independent of each other because of those offset. And the fact that those offset teeth are running here inside of that, that opening, that mouth. So with those installed, I can turn this dial and I can increase or decrease the size of my dado. So that is now set for a half inch dado. And as we increase that, turning the dial, we can take it all the way up to 13 sixteenths. So there's a, a flat blade here, a flat blade here, a center blade. And all of them are reaching inward, in the case of the center one, reaching both left and right in order to, uh, to, to clean out the waste in between. What an interesting idea. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set this. Uh, one thing I, I almost failed to say, 
Um, when you turn the dial, you're really fine tuning the outside blade. The inside blade and the back blade, the one closest to the motor or closest to the headstock on your uh, radial arm saw, it has an internal cam here that turns and uh, you, you get that one close to the setting uh, that you're, you're shooting for and you do your fine tuning with the dial on the outside of the outside blade. Okay, so I have that set for a three quarter inch cut. You know, we're, we're close anyway. We'll see how that comes out. Um, oh, one more thing I didn't mention. Guess who made this blade for Sears? Vermont American, the same company who makes the six inch dado blade, carbide tip dado blade for Shopsmith. All right, let's uh, make some cuts. Okay, so I don't forget, I'm gonna take off the watch and the ring. Arbor is going to go on to the Mark V down here inside of the, uh, the lower saw guard. And I still haven't tightened the nut on the arbor, so we need to do that here real quick. There is advice in the instructions uh, warning you about over tightening. You definitely do not want to do that. Um, we'll just go ahead and call that a day. Close up the lower saw guard a bit, and then we'll move the table into place. Five point safety check. We will lock the arbor, lock the quill lock, check our table, make sure it's tight. Carriage, headstock, and the table height. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm gonna drop my stop collar over here, down from above onto the carriage so the table can't go any deeper than it is right now. All right, so what are we gonna cut? Well, let's, uh, let's start with some pine because again, it's, it's what I have. A little bit of a warp in it. Curious how it's gonna behave, so let's give it a shot. So uh, that felt like I wasn't cutting anything. My gosh, that was such a smooth ride. Um, is it a perfectly flat bottom? Uh, it's not perfect, but look at the crisp, sharp edges here and a nice flat bottom. Wow, but that's beautiful, cross grain. Now, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, what, what could I do to show you if it splinters, well, I have some uh, some quarter inch uh, oak veneered Luon. I want to see how this behaves on the Luon as much as I do on the, uh, the on the oak. So let's raise the blade up, raise the table up, and this is basically going to wind up being a score cut. But we'll try it on both sides of this piece.
<laughs> well, you can see as uh, it, it, because it's trailing off here, I definitely have a bow in my board or a cup. Um, but check out check out the scoring on the Luon or the uh, the chip out. Looks really good. And here on the oak side, also looks really good. We don't have a perfectly flat bottom, but we certainly have a flatter bottom than we get with a dado blade, uh, with a wobble dado blade. All right, so that's more like what I was wanting to do for you. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to take the questions, comments, cheap shots that come in from this video, combine them with the ones from the weekend video, and uh, we'll put out a stumped Q&A episode tomorrow. Again, if you happen to be a channel member, be sure to join in the meeting if you can. Um, that meeting will be recorded, and that meeting will then be shared to members only. So for those who can't attend, you can attend. All right, in the meantime, make it a great day.